One of the protesters took a big board, shoved it in my neck, and threw me off the trailer. Did the police do anything when these protesters were jumping in the dump trailer? No, they did not. They just sat in their vehicles and watched. Today I'm introducing you to another rail line blockade buster. His name is Zach Solomon Lamaru, and he needs our help now. When lawless far left wing radicals tried to bring their nationwide railway blocking protest to Alberta as part of their ongoing plan to shut down Canada, they were the ones being shut down by severely normal Alberta men. The protesters say they are in solidarity with the Wet'suwet'en people against the coastal gas link natural gas pipeline in northern British Columbia. However, the Wet'suwet'en elected band council and eight of 13 hereditary chiefs all support the prosperity and jobs the pipeline offers to their community. These blockaders are just radical environmentalist interlopers inserting themselves into other people's lives. Now, just eight hours into the protest west of Edmonton, normal Alberta men had had enough and showed up to politely and peacefully pull the blockade down. And since then, it has been my mission over the past few days to track down each and every one of them and thank them personally offer them a tiny token of our gratitude for standing up for the rule of law when no one else will in the form of a case of beer of their choosing. We met and thanked Chase Chomi yesterday. Today you're going to meet another one of the men we identified. I'd like to introduce all of you at home to, I guess, an everyday hero. This is Zachary Solomon Lamoureux and he was one of the rail line blockade busters, right? Yep. Why did you go down there? I mean, for, I've talked to a couple other guys and it wasn't it wasn't an organized thing. I think none of you actually knew each other. No, none of us knew each other at all. It was just a heat of the moment thing. I saw Guy Simpson go and start taking stuff down and starting to bring it over to his truck. And then my manager, he offered to let him use our dump trailer and I went to go start spotting him, guiding him back so that he wouldn't hit any of the vehicles that were sitting on the sides of the road. And then after that, I just decided to jump right in and help. There was nothing more that I could have thought to do. It was just, you know, if no one else is going to do it, I might as well have. So why did you go down to the rail blockade? Like, What compelled you to just head down there? I just wanted to see what was going on because I noticed that as the hours were going on, it kept getting bigger and bigger and bigger and more people were coming. You guys, are t you guys aren't even from Alberta, you That's morons. True. I saw it at like 8 o'clock in the morning, the day that it happened, and I made a big post about it just to show my friends and let everyone know that, hey, if you're coming down this way, there's a blockade going on. I don't know if they're going to start blocking the roads. And then, yeah, I just went and just wanted to watch and see what was going to happen. Do you think they were in it for the long haul? I think after we started actually trying to tear stuff down, I think they lost all hope. <laughs> Not trying to sound mean, but like I think they knew that they weren't going to be there for long. Yeah, uh, we're in an industrial park and the, the rail line uh, where they blockaded is by an industrial park and that's probably the closest to manual labor those people <laughs> have ever been in a long time. Um, you, uh, Something else happened to you though, because uh, the mainstream media has said that this is just a bunch of you know peaceful flower children blockading a rail line. But... It wasn't quite like that for you, was it? No. So I started dismantling the blockade and a couple of the protesters had actually gone and climbed into the dump trailer and they started throwing stuff back out of it. And I went to go climb onto it and start putting some stuff back in it. And one of the protesters took a big board, shoved it in my neck and threw me off the trailer. Did the police do anything when these protesters were jumping in the dump trailer? No, they did not. They just sat in their vehicles and watched. It looked like, from that global news footage, that things could escalate if you guys weren't in control of your faculties. And it looks like you guys were. I mean, you were, removed garbage in about the most Canadian way ever. Please, thank you, excuse me. I mean, if you guys were the out-of-control redneck hillbillies that the media likes to paint you guys are, things could have got a little Western out there. I agree completely with that. Like, I... I'm not a very violent person. I am not. I do get angry. I did yell at a couple of the protesters because they were yelling at me, but what you give is what you get. I never laid hands on any of them. I tried to talk as peacefully as I could. I tried to avoid every single confrontation that I could. 
and I just wanted to get the garbage out of there. If you can give us a viable option for an alternative to oil and gas that puts out the same gigajoule output as oil and gas, then we will listen to what you have to say. Well, Zach, I have uh, a small token of appreciation for you um, from a grateful nation, a grateful province, um, all the farmers who can't move their grain right now because of the rail blockades, the via rail commuters that can't get home, all the thousands of rail line workers who are laid off, and just normal people who care deeply about the rule of law. I said that I would personally deliver a case of beer to everybody involved in the rail line blockade bus stop. Here's your 15 pack of Miller Genuine Draft, not sponsored by Miller Genuine Draft, not opposed to a sponsorship by Miller Genuine Draft. Um, it's just a small token of appreciation. I'm sure each one of those cans represents thousands of people who wish they could have done what you did and here's hoping that the rest of the country is sort of inspired by what you guys did um, and we're going to see what we can do to get you some justice the police didn't want to help you um, so we're going to um, and Zach just thank you thank you so much for taking the time and coming to talk to me thank you for putting this out on the air for all of us and you know I hope that I put an image in the rest of Canada that we're not going to be stopped by just a couple of people sitting on a railroad tracks. So get up, take the 10 minutes, even if it's just complete strangers, go up, take your time, start cleaning it. We need to save this country. What a decent guy with a good message and an even better attitude. Zach was assaulted on camera. Global News captured it in their footage. They even aired it on the news that night and yet Global News and the mainstream media still contend that these rail line blockaders are just perfectly peaceful hippies with a cause. Even with the assault caught on camera, the police refused to help or even tried to identify the person who assaulted Zach just meters from where they were sitting in their cars. Well, that's not good enough. Zach helped Canadians by standing up for the rule of law, and now it's time for us to help Zach. So here's what we're going to do. Anyone nonviolent who is arrested by police for removing a blockade will receive free civil liberties lawyers from us here at Rebel News. You saw how Zach and Guy Simpson and Chase took out the trash. They were calm, polite, and peaceful in the face of abuse and violence. Replicate that. And if the police arrest you for upholding the law when they refuse to, we've got your back. And we'll deliver or ship a case of beer to all the heroes we can identify. I'll hand deliver it in every instance where that's possible because I want to be the one to personally thank every single person involved in doing the right thing by the entire country. And in this case, we're going to step up and help Zach because the cops were apparently too busy to do so. We're going to pursue a civil lawsuit to get justice for Zach, just like we did against Dion Buse when he hit me and the courts let me down and didn't include me in the process. So here's where we need your help to do all of this. First, help us find the masked thug that shoved a plywood sign into Zach's neck and assaulted him on camera. If you have information that leads to the positive identification of the thug who assaulted Zach, we will give you $1,000. So if you've got information on the identity of that violent masked coward, please send it to tips at rebelnews.com and we will keep it confidential. And if you'd like to help us draw a line in the sand and set a marker down for the rest of these rail line blockaders, these violent hooligans, that if you put your hands on people who show up peacefully and politely to uphold the rule of law in this country and clear trash off the tracks, you're going to be in for a rough ride, even if the police don't want to charge you. If you can chip in to cover the legal costs to help us help Zach, please go to cleartheblockades.com. That's cleartheblockades.com. Lawsuits are expensive, but we think it's so important to send a message not just to the handsy, unruly ragamuffins blocking train tracks across the country, but also to officials who refuse to do something about it when the tracks are blocked or when someone like Zach is assaulted. And of course, we'll pay for the beer ourselves. Now, I learned a lesson too from guys like Zach, Guy Simpson and Chase. If officials don't act, 
then we must. For Rebel News, I'm Sheila Gunn-Reed. It's still cool to stand up for the rule of law. That's why the Mounties are such a beloved symbol of Canada. Our politicians and our law enforcement officials may have forgotten that, but people like Zach and Guy Simpson and Chase have not. If you can help us help Zach, please go to cleartheblockades.com.